Hello, hello, this is the Digital Loop, season three, episode 16. Hi, Ivan, how are you? Hi, Paul, great to see you. Very happy to be back here at the Digital Loop. Yes, and uh, ironically enough, so we're recording the Digital Loop on Google Hangouts, for those who don't know. I mean, you've probably seen, for those who watch the video, the little sign on top that says Google. And today we're going to talk about Google Plus, uh, of which Google Hangouts was one of the features. So, And the reason we do that is because an article has been making the rounds this week about the demise of Google Plus. You want to take that one? Yes, uh, there is this article going around called Inside the Sad Expensive Failure of Google Plus by Seth Figerman, uh, and it was published on Mashable. And, and, and basically, they are uh, noting the fact that after four years, uh, Google is eliminating the requirement to use a Google Plus account uh, when signing up for other Google uh, services like YouTube, for example. So they realize that this is this is a move in the direction towards uh, the potential fall uh, and, 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 and and disappearance of Google Plus, according to this uh, this article. And um, we thought that this is an interesting interesting topic to talk about. Uh, you know, looking at this article, looking at what were the mistakes made uh, since the beginning, and uh, probably you know interesting lessons that we can take out of this this uh, uh, sad, expensive failure, as uh, Mr. Figerman says. Uh, so maybe you know you as our listeners uh, could have a you know could have this in mind and maybe get some interesting insights into how you can apply these lessons into your business. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many of our listeners are on Google Plus. I mean, by default, and that was one of the one of the issues. By default, you are on Google Plus if you have any Google product, as Ivan just mentioned. Uh, basically, I think it was Google Plus launched maybe a bit more than four years ago. It was the answer, uh, an answer, maybe not the answer to Facebook because uh, they thought that they had to go social. They had made other uh, tries before. There was Orkut. Uh, which was one social network. There was Wave, which was a collaborative system. There was Buzz, which was more like Twitter. So it was like uh, sending updates. But Google Plus was really the one that kind of gathered everything together. And it's true that four, four or five years ago, we all thought that, look, Google has, it's this massive company. It's a very successful company. It, it has all the pieces. I mean, it has YouTube, which is probably the most uh, the the video system that is mostly used in the world although now facebook is kind of eating their cake but it had uh, of course email it had all the other pieces of the experience and he said okay maybe if they may merge it together somehow they can actually create something that is more social well four years later it seems that it doesn't has it doesn't really work because like I said, most of you might be on Google+, Plus, but I'm not sure that many of you actually still use it. I actually yeah. kind of not use it. I mean, we use it here because it's actually very practical. And then I'll, I'll talk to that at the end. Some features were nice. But I think, uh, and I'm going to ask Ivan to list what he thinks were the failures, but one of the maybe the biggest failures we made, which I'll start with, was this kind of sense to uh, force people into it. You know, it was not really an opt an opt in. It was you had to opt in. I mean, if you had a Gmail, which is the email for Google, you basically had a Google Plus account. If you had, like you just mentioned, a YouTube account, you then suddenly, if you wanted to comment, you had to have a, a Google Plus account. So something was kind of fed to you, whether you liked it or not. Whereas if you think about Facebook, the obvious competition. It's a decision to go there. You sign up, and then you have services. So that would be the, the first mistake. But of course, it's a luxury mistake. Because when you say, uh, uh, Ivan, that you want to talk about failures, not a lot of company, and I would even say almost no company in the world had that luxury to say, OK, we have all these pieces together. We can put them together. So it's, it's actually kind of strange that Google, with all their firing power, were able to do such a massive mistake. But I'll, I'll let you run through. Uh, what do you think were the mistakes, Ivan? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, and I think that the, everything started since the beginning with the fact that I have the impression that this was a product born out of fear. Uh, they didn't have a clear strategy. Their objective was to compete with Facebook. 
they look at Facebook and, and in, the, in the article they quote one of the executives saying, Facebook is going to kill us. We have to do this. And basically this is the argument that they present to, to Larry Page uh, to give him the reasons why they had to do uh, a social network. Uh, and, and I have the impression that starting creating a new product based out of fear, it's never a good idea. I mean, I understand that you need to compete. You need, I understand that the market is really, really, really com competitive and you need to keep your eyes on, on what's going on with your competitors. But if you base your future on just reacting out of fear, you're going to get in trouble. And, and I think that this is one of the big problems, that this is an, a product that it was focused 100% on what the competitors were doing instead of trying to figure out what is it that they are strong and continue developing that which is what they've been doing until then. Yeah, at the same time though, I agree with you, but at the same time though, it has also to be, uh, it's certain that if you were Google, if you're a company, if you look at how, what the, the, the mind share that Facebook is eating, I mean, there was this article that I have to find out for you guys, but there's this article that shows that a lot of people, especially in emerging markets, they don't differentiate being on the internet and being on Facebook. For them, Facebook is the internet. Meaning that it's an obvious threat for Google because Google, it's uh, you, you go there to search, you go there, you know, to access your email. But in a world where people use maybe less email, or at least in your generation, in a world that people, you know, just go on Facebook, the main drive of business for Google advertising suddenly almost disappears. So yes, it was uh, the fear was there, and it was a good fear to have, and it's still a good fear to have. They're still competing, but you're right, probably just basing uh, it on fear and not having, at least from what we know, not having a strategy, which is, I, I would even say more, it's not about not having a strategy because let's not kid ourselves. I'm sure that they had some kind of strategy, but they were, they did something that wasn't different enough. I mean, there, there was a lot of issues as well. I thought like, for instance, these circles, it was too complicated to use. How do I add people and circle people? And if I want to create a page like the digital loop page, it's such more, it was, a, it still is more difficult than doing that on Facebook. So there were these small decisions, but it was like, yeah, well, I have a network already when I have all my friends and my acquaintances, even probably my business contacts, which is called Facebook. Why would I, put energy into another one. And that's maybe there was no value proposition that was different from, from Facebook here. And this is also why people like, you know, why would I actually go there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's one of the second uh, mistakes that I have on my list here, the lack of clear plan to differentiate the service from Facebook. I mean, basically what happened is people, you know, there was this big pressure to, to get it rolling and they launch it. And then people look at it and it was like, Okay, it, it's just like Facebook. It actually just looks kind of like a, mish, a mishmash of Facebook and Twitter. Uh, okay, now what? You know, it was not like like a clear differentiator that you can see what are the difference, what is the value proposition, what is the value that you get by going there. Um, one of the things that I, I, I noticed in the article, which I, I thought was really interesting, is that they had this very aggressive uh, bias for action, which I think I always say that is really important that you need to keep moving forward and have this bias for action. But the problem is that if your 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 foundation, it's not solid. If your strategy is weak, and you are just moving, charging forward, so you make the deadline, uh, you're also going to get in troubles. And uh, one of the things that I, I thought was interesting, I had this quote by an anonymous employee, that uh, a Google employee that didn't want to mention his name. Uh, he says that uh, the belief was that they were they were always just one weird feature away from the thing taking off. So basically, it's just they launch it. And then they just start to throw features at it, hoping that one of them will be, you know, the silver bullet that will get, you know, traction and everybody will go crazy about it. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, also, as, as you mentioned, some of the features are really, really cool. I mean, the features that right now they are being spun out like, like Google Hangouts, uh, like photos. Uh, these are fantastic features. The problem is that, you know, just putting them all in one piece and, and forcing you to like it, and uh, it was not the best way to do it. It's also, inter it's also interesting, I mean, although nobody seems to agree nowadays, but it's also interesting that we've seen, so it's been four years where basically Google was aggregating everything in one single piece. It says, okay, Google Plus, and you have a single identity to access your Gmail, your YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. 
Whereas if you look at other uh, other examples, and Facebook is a prime one, there was this drive to unbundle things. So they put Messenger is a different product than Facebook. I mean, it's still part of it, but it's a different product, especially on mobile, and mobile is the key here. They also create a Facebook Groups app. They also create a Facebook Ads app for people who wanted to run ads. They also, I mean, they created many ones. Some did fail, some not. Uh, I mean, the only two that seems to be working, and this is why the, the debate is on, is Facebook itself and and uh, Messenger, obviously, for messaging. But the point is, there was on one side, there was a, an attempt to aggregate everything, and the other side, there was an, an attempt to kind of differentiate the different parts of the experience. So maybe also it was, maybe the timing was, was wrong, especially, again, on mobile. So maybe it was too much. Uh, and again, it was complicated. I mean, even for people tech savvy, like Ivan and myself, uh, honestly, sometimes, just inviting someone, first of all, creating a page was a bit of a hassle. Inviting someone on Google Hangouts is a hassle. There's stuff that we're like, okay, if people like us, and I'm not saying that we are the cleverest in the world, if people have, like us have, a, have an issue understanding exactly how it works, then you cannot expect you know, the uh, everyday people to actually expect that. I'm not saying that in a condensing way. And whereas if you, if you think about Facebook, most of the stuff, maybe be, be besides privacy, which is always a, an issue, it's pretty straightforward. So that was also something that, uh, and after four years, it's almost inexcusable. You know, you could say that in the first six to 12 months that there were stuff that were difficult. Okay, because, you know, you're launching a product. But after four years, even though probably they had given up before this, this deadline, uh, it was a bit inexcusable that it was still so hard to use. Then the uh, next mistake. Um, big aspirations, but no well-defined purpose for users. Again, as yeah. we've been mentioning earlier before, uh, people didn't need another version of Facebook. And basically, they were hoping that, you know, creating something uh, different, but not really, <laughs> uh, without a clear reason why I should do it, uh, people will actually just 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 move away from Facebook and go into Google+. And, and as you mentioned, for a lot of people, Facebook is the hub. Facebook is the place where, where you are, you know, 24 seven, when you are connecting, when you are chatting, when you are commenting, when you are watching content. I mean, um, this has become the hub for a lot of people. And trying to force you to get you out of there to this other place to do the same thing uh, maybe was not the right the right approach and, and and I think that this is an important lesson that we when you are developing your products when you are developing a new idea you have to have a clear reason a clear purpose for your users users need to have a clear reason to be there uh, as opposed to just trying to make another version of what they already love I and, 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 and obviously, if you think about social networking, actually, uh, there's been many attempts. If you think about this private social networking called Path, same thing happened, basically. I mean, it's still, it's still around. There's still some traction in some countries in Southeast Asia. But basically, you know, they were trying maybe too much to offer something that is already similar. And I mean, Facebook is by no means perfect. And Facebook is by no means, you know, godsend. But at the same time, it works good enough, well enough for most people, it's easy enough and it connects and it has a network effect. It has all the people are there, uh, basically, and if you want to connect with someone, you'll find them there. And then you know you have LinkedIn, which you which I find the UI sucks, but at least you have this kind of professional type of network and that's good enough. And we don't have the time, all of us, to run five different social networks a day, right? Uh, and uh, and maybe you have also Twitter, which is a water cooler or something for, for the world or something. But so, yes, I'm not saying that people shouldn't try because it's more a different shade, uh, maybe a little bit from you, that people shouldn't try to to compete with Facebook. But I don't think that the competition will be a heads-on copy of Facebook, which a bit Google Plus was. Uh, are we seeing that now the biggest threat to social networking as we know it are stuff like Snapchat, which are a completely different value proposition they are private. There's nothing public. Uh, they are mobile only. So this is where probably a threat, if you want to call it like that, will come. Which is also why uh, Facebook is buying all these other startups. Is why Facebook is releasing all these other products. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And 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 it's interesting because in a way, as you mentioned, uh, what we're talking about could be seen as you know, depending your perspective. If you look at it from the let's say a pessimistic point of view, you can say, yeah, you should not do that. You should not just try to compete. On the other hand, well, yes. I mean, if you if you look at the market and, and you see that you are 
uh, there's also a very important element that Facebook, uh, uh, what, in the eyes of Google, and actually this is the reality, Facebook had been taking a lot of Google employees. Uh, a lot of people uh, that were working at Google, uh, they were uh, being offered uh, uh, important roles at Facebook, and that's happening now you know, all over the place. At Twitter, Amazon, a lot of very, very uh, uh, great engineers are, are jumping around from all these different big companies. And, and, and I think that they, feel, they felt threatened by that. Uh, what I'm saying is that basing your strategy just on you know, competing head on with your biggest you know, competitor might not be the best, the best way to build a business. Yes, correct. Do you have any other uh, lessons? Um, well, we already we we already mentioned all of them basically during our conversation. But I think w one of the things that it was it's important. Uh, I remember when when Google Plus came up, uh, I was very interested in it, and I started reading a lot about it. And I remember reading Chris Brogan. He even wrote a book about about Google Plus, uh, and and one of his big, his biggest argument why he said that Google Plus was a game changer was because if you think about it all the content yet that you put on Google+, Plus, all the content that you create, it's automatically being indexed by Google. So it, it made a lot of sense to put all your content on Google+, Plus as opposed to put it on Facebook. Why? Because Facebook is not, uh, it, 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 the content that you put on Facebook cannot be indexed on Google search. So if you're a content creator, uh, it made a lot of sense to actually focus on on developing your presence on google plus um yeah but, uh, yeah, but though, though arguably i mean it was a clear decision by by facebook not to allow google to index its content but now arguably with the network effect it has it almost doesn't need to be indexed by because there's i mean there's and again facebook is not perfect there's also a, a problem of noise versus signal but it made sense for facebook to do it it actually now exactly. when you look in hindsight it actually it's actually even okay for content provider. It's not perfect again, but it's okay. It's a different value proposition, See, which is why as well, probably coming back to your first point, which is why Google thought at some point that they needed to act and to do something before you know Facebook was becoming too important. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if, if Facebook has become too important. I don't know. I, but and the thing is, five years later, Google is still a powerhouse and Facebook is a powerhouse. And they seem to be both going really well uh, on on different value proposition. Actually, there was a there was an article the other day that showed that if you look at the way people use uh, the internet on mobile, if you look at countries, uh, at, sorry, at uh, at uh, regions, Africa and Asia, people use the web, the mobile web, a lot. Whereas versus in the US, people are really driven by apps, which means, by the way, that you know. Google has a, probably appears uh, on in, in continents when when uh, where people use the mobile web because Google is kind of the mobile web in a certain way. I know this is a bit too easy to say; it's a bit controversial, but you know it appears everywhere. Plus, and that's the other thing that's so important: Google basically powers through Android a huge chunk of the mobile uh, ecosystem, so they can also continue finding ways to deliver ads because that's their main business probably by other ways without having to have a social network. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, but uh, it, exactly, I mean, you took my, the words out of my mouth. That's exactly what, what, we, what we look at it, that on the one hand, it, although the arguments made a lot of sense, uh, that you know you should put your content here because then it's searchable on Google and that's where you want to be found, uh, the reality is that, you know, in hindsight, it's very easy to talk about, you know, after the things happen. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting to see that Yes, you can have all your content indexed in Google, and uh, and that's great. But on the other hand, you know the fact, as you mentioned, the network effects that you have on Facebook are really strong. So even if your content, once you put it on Facebook, it's not going to be searchable. It's not going to be indexed. Uh, um, you know the fact that everybody's there. Everybody's there. You know that was, that, what does that mean? The fact that a lot of people are there. Uh, this allows people to have access to your content. And basically, this is one of the reasons, for example, if you guys are right now watching this video on Facebook, uh, you have noticed that we are putting the videos, uh, we're embedding the videos on Facebook. We are not linking from YouTube. Uh, and we can do another show just based on that. But it's interesting the fact that, again, uh, uh, the reaction and the way these, these organizations are, are reacting to each other and offering different value propositions, it's, 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 it's very fascinating. Uh, but again, I think that the important lessons here is 
avoid you know creating something out of fear uh, fear is an, a big motivator and I see, understand that you know you need to be able to react and be adaptive but if that's your only motivation to do something sooner or later this is this might come and bite you in the ass yeah <laughs> but still we're very happy to be able to uh, to use Google Hangouts is one of the best products that came out of this entire experiment and I really think it's amazing there are other products you mentioned like Google Photos it might not very be very social but to save your photos is great so there's been it's also great stuff came out of this experiment very expensive apparently although nobody asks the exact numbers a very expensive experiment from from Google, and God knows they have yeah. the money to allow themselves to do crazy experiments. So why not? Yeah, and, and absolutely. And, and by no means this means that this is the end of Google Plus, and you know the apocalypse is coming. Uh, what they are doing right now, they are they are they are pivoting. They are they are as, as we mentioned earlier, they are uh, separating some of the best features like Google Hangouts, like Photos, uh, and for sure uh, they are gonna they are right now working on creating something different something new so this is by no means the end of Google Plus or you know this is that something really really bad happening uh, but uh, we thought that this is an interesting interesting topic to talk about and, and and I hope that you guys will continue to come back and watch the digital loop on Google Hangouts and watch the videos on YouTube, YouTube. and also watch us on, 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 on Facebook <laughs> uh, and and of course if you want to uh, get in touch with us you can go to the digital loop.co we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on YouTube, we're everywhere. Uh, just uh, stay in touch with us. Um, and I don't know, Paul, if you have anything else you want to add? No, you, you're a social network by yourself, Ivan. Uh, okay, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, see you next time, Ivan. See you next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.